Welcome to the Old World First Impressions slash Review series where I'm going to upload about three videos a week just going over the armies of the Old World. Now, most, if not all, the videos at the time you watch this are actually uploaded already behind my members only wall. So if you are impatient and you want to see another video now and you don't want to wait for the next one to come out on YouTube here, uh, just go ahead and click on the playlist, see if the one you want is already available. Most of them are there and real soon they'll all be there. Click on that and join the channel when you watch it right now. Otherwise, let's get into the review. All right, let's talk about Bretonia in the old world. First impressions of the new edition of Bretonia. So um, I'm going to go over the Bretonia stuff in the Forces of Fantasy. Now, all the special rules and things are at the back of the book. We're going to start there so we have a better reference as we talk about the units. So we have the Lance Formation. is a formation unique to the Bretonians. It has the knights assembled in a wedge formation. So one in the front rank, two in the second rank behind him, three in the third rank, four in the fifth rank, and so on. It looks really cool. It gives plus one combat res, and everybody on the edges of the lance formation count as being in the fighting rank for making attacks. So you get um, more cav in a more narrow formation fighting, which is uh, pretty good. There's some rules about what happens when you get charged when you're in the lance formation on the side and stuff like that. It's two pages of rules. We don't have to go over all that. You basically got it covered with everybody on the outer edges of the wedge formation are going to be basically counting as base contact and you get plus one combat res for being in a lance formation. But keep that in mind as we talk about the lance formation. I will then go over the special rules of the army. Um, and then we'll do the units from there. Then if I remember not to go out of order, we'll hit the lore of the lady as well. You know what? I'll get the lore of the lady now in this section here. So uh, Kingdom of Bretonia, special rules, you have the Blessing of the Lady. Um, if you are familiar with Old Warhammer, so the Bretonian army can choose to kneel and pray to the Lady for her blessing before the game starts. So they're not going to go first, but they're going to gain a 6-up ward save and a uh, 5-up ward save against attacks of strength 5 or higher. Now throughout the game, they could lose the Blessing of the Lady by being unchivalrous. Uh, retreating from combat, or fleeing from combat, or um, or fleeing, or uh, refusing a challenge. <clears throat> you got to be honorable for the blessing of the lady. Uh, they have the finest war horses special rule, which is a really good rule. Uh, whenever a model with this special rule declares a charge, flee, or pursuit rule, they may reroll a dice that shows a natural one. Really good. Uh, you have the peasantry rule. Uh, it basically, you, if you don't have the blessing of the lady rule, you have the peasantry rule. Peasants are just lowly humans that don't panic knights. So if peasants flee or break near you, you don't care as a knight. Uh, then you have a uh, knight's vow. There are three of them. A unit with uh, So basic vow is the knight vow. You go up to the questing vow and the grail vow. So a unit with the, this chivalrous vow, the knight vow, um, cannot be uh, cannot join units with the uh, peasantry special rule, um, and then uh, peasants within six inches you don't cause panic all that kind of stuff. So yeah, uh, nothing really there. It's just like the peasants don't scare you, and you can't join peasants. Uh, questing vow. Um, a model with this vow has a stubborn special rule and can reroll fear. Panic and terror tests. Um, in addition, no tests when peasants, same as the knight's vow. Uh, however, a model with this vow cannot be equipped with a lance. And a model for a unit with this vow can't be joined by a character with uh, the knight's vow. See the questing vow to join a questing knights. And the grail vow, a model with this vow, is immune to psychology. They gain magical tax and stubborn. And they always benefit from the blessing of the lady at the start of the game, whether the army prayed or not. However, a model with this vow cannot refuse a challenge. All right, so that's basic vow stuff. Nothing different if you feel familiar with Bretonia, what you'd expect with those. <clears throat> so as we have a basic understanding of the Bretonian special rules, let's talk about Bretonians. Uh, so the army composition can have one duke, 
and then one baron or prophetess per 1,000 points. And then you have uh, paladins, damsels, and sergeant at arms. Up to 50% of your army can be characters. And then you have must have uh, one or more units of either knights of the realm on foot or mounted knights of the realm. And you must have one unit of men at arms and or peasant bowmen. Zero to one unit of knights errant per knights of the realm on foot or mounted knights of the realm. So you can't have all knights errant. You need your knights of the realm. But you can't, you can't even have two units of knights errant and only one knights of the realm. Not, not bad rules there. Otherwise, pretty typical organization there. Uh, the Bretonians have a unique uh, rule where every army can pretty much upgrade a hero level character. Like, uh, sorry, what do they call them in this game? They don't call them hero level characters. Okay, uh, there's always a character, usually the weakest type of character that can uh, uh, be upgraded to hold uh, the banner, the BSB, the Battle Standard Bearer. Every time I say BSB moving forward, keep in mind the Battle Standard Bearer. Um, the Bretonians, it's for free. Every other army is 25 points. All right, let's talk the Duke. This new character that we haven't had in Bretonia in the past. It is one step above what we typically call the Lord level character, which is the Baron. So the Duke has weapon skill seven and strength five, four wounds, and five attacks. Um, other, you know what? I. I, I, I mentioned the stats he has that are better than the Baron, but I'm going to start over as if you've never played Warhammer Fantasy before. The, the Duke has movement 4, weapon skill 7, ballista skill 3, that's inconsequential, nobody cares, strength 5, which is really good for a human, toughness 4, 4 wounds is really good, initiative 5, 5 attack, which is really good, and leadership 9, for 175 points. You have a hand weapon and medium armor, I mean, heavy armor, a hand weapon and heavy armor, uh, you can have a Morning Star, a Great Weapon, a Lance, you can take a Shield, all those things. Um, a Baron or a Paladin. Hmm. I'm going to turn the book towards you. So here's how the Leo characters now, I don't know if you can see it. So all the characters, all, all the Lords of Bretonia are listed together. Um, a Baron is one step down of a character. He has one less weapon skill, one less wound, and one less attack over the uh, are under the Duke, and a paladin has one less wound, one less initiative, and one less attack in leadership under a baron. Well, stats is decrease. Now, a Duke, that's the highest level one, comes with the Grail Vow. The a baron or paladin can buy the Grail Vow for 20 points. Um, the baron or paladin can buy a questing vow for 15 points. So the Duke is 75 points more than the baron, but he already has the questing vow built in. So he's really only 55 points more. Considering you're probably gonna buy the Grail Vow for your for your Baron. You don't have to, but you probably want to. Um, a Duke, that's the highest level character, can have up to 100 points of magic items. Whereas the Baron, the the, the character we used to have, um, can only take 75 points of uh, magic items, and the Paladin can take 50. So we have three tiers of martial characters. Uh, very much what you would expect. Rule, rules are Blessing the Lady, Rallying Cry, that's a core, rallying cry. That's a core rule in the rule book. Uh, Duke has Grail Vow, otherwise um, Knight's Vow for the Baron and the Paladin, but they can upgrade to Questing or uh, Grail Vow themselves. Um, solid characters. Uh, mounts, what they can take are going to be a few pages over. So we can have a Bretonian Warhorse, a Barden Pegasus, a Royal Pegasus or a Hippogriff. Now the Hippogriff can only be taken by Dukes and Barons. Um, the Paladin can take all three. So I feel it's important to actually talk about those um, mounts right now. So the Barton Pegasus and the Royal Pegasus, they're both monstrous cav on a 40 by 60 base. They have fly. Uh, a Pegasus is movement seven, strength four. If you buy a Pegasus, it gives you plus one wound. So you use the toughness of your character, so you have plus one wound. The Pegasus has Two strength four attacks, initiative four. It only costs you thirty points for that weapon or for that mount. Um, but it the Pegasus does come with counter charge and first charge. Uh, reminder on those a counter charge is if you get charged from the front by cav infantry. No, sorry, cav chariot and monsters. 
you can make a counter charge and charge them as they charge you. First charges, uh, the first charge of the game you make is just a negative for your opponent. I think it gets disrupted. Uh, they have fly 10 and swift stride, so very mobile for 30 points. Uh, however, if you want to spend 60 points instead of 30 to get a Royal Pegasus for your character, you get movement 8, you don't care because you have fly 10 on the Pegasus. Uh, the Pegasus is strength 5 and adds 3 initial 5 attacks with armor vein 1 to the, to the model. Um, the Royal Pegasus gives you plus 1 toughness and plus 1 wound. So you're going to be Tiffany toughness 5 with, was it, 5 wounds, toughness 5 on a Duke on a Royal Pegasus. Uh, the, the Royal Pegasus comes with Stomp 2, so 2 additional Strength 5 attacks on initiative 1, with Swift Stride and First Charge, Counter Charge, and all that. So you get a lot more for 30 more points. Now the great thing about um, characters, this is more for you old guys, um, a character on a Pegasus or Royal Pegasus may join Pegasus Knights. We'll get to them in a second, but have been able to do that in the past. Now you can, a flying character can join a flying unit. Uh, the other mount they could take, which is just yummy, I think it's way over here, is a Hippogriff. This thing is 120 points, twice the point of a, twice the point of a Royal Pegasus. This thing also gives you plus one toughness, but three extra wounds. So that's like seven wounds of toughness five on a Duke with a Hippogriff. Hippogriff adds, at an issue of five, four strength five attacks. They have two weapons, the Serrated Maw and uh, Wicked Claws, and the Griffonic Pelt, which counts as heavy armor, but I can't see how that matters in any way, because any maw that can get on this Hippogriff also has heavy armor, and you don't get both. But it's there. Uh, you may buy Barding for the Hippogriff for 15 points. I think I forgot to mention, but... Yeah, the Royal Pegasus has Barding as well. I think I forgot to mention that. So basically, Hippogriff is 135 points. You can buy Barding all day long. Get that nice two-up armor save on your Fly 9 monster with Stomp Attacks D3, uh, Swiss Stride, Terror, Counter Charge, uh, Close Order, but that doesn't matter. Um, but his two weapons are the, sorry, the Wicked Claws, which are Strength 5, AP 2. But you also have a Serrated Maw, his Beak. Um, it is Strength User, which is Strength 5, no AP, but his Armor Bane 2, so 6 is a wound, or AP 2 and multiple wounds too. In combat, this model must make one of his attacks each turn with this weapon. I like this, 120 points gives you a lot here. But, 120 points. So we have some decently fighty characters. We can also purchase uh, knightly virtues, which are buffs that, like, I actually don't know how to describe it. Um, an extra little buff you can purchase for these uh, characters. And in magic items, obviously, at the point cost restrictions I gave you. Uh, we have Hand Maidens of the Lady. There are two levels. There's Prophetess and Damsels. They are other, they're humans. Okay, so a damsel is a human stat line. I'll go over that once. Every No, I guess I can't go over that once in Bretonia because you have multiple human stat lines. So this damsel is your typical average human stat line. Movement four. Three, 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 three. three <laughs> across the board. Two wounds, three initiative, one attack, leadership seven for 60 points. Um, a damsel is a level one wizard and can purchase level two for 30 points. So 90 points for level two wizard. And can have up to 50 points of magic items. Uh, a prophetess is a level three wizard for 135 points, can purchase level four for another 30 points. So 165 points for a level four prophetess. A prophetess has plus one weapon skill, plus one wound, plus one attack, and plus one leadership over the damsel. Uh, they have uh, special rules, Aura of the Lady, Blessing of the Lady, Lore of the Lady, Magical Attacks, and Magic Resistance 2, and Shield the Lady. So any spells cast at this uh, Handmaiden of the Lady and their unit, minus 2 to the total, which is real good. Uh, Aura of the Lady, um, any unit this character joins has the Magical Attack special rule, really good for hitting uh, Ethereal. And then Shield of the Lady. So, so long as um, a damsel is in a unit with unit strength 10 or more, uh, so basically five cavalry models. Um, they can, they can. Re it's called retire to the back. You don't have to be in the front rank of, or they're gonna be in the middle of the lance, so they can't be attacked, but still do everything they need to do. Still operate normally and cast spells normally by being in that uh, second rank. Now the lures they can take are battle magic, elementalism, and illusion. 
three good lures. If you haven't watched the magic video, it's either coming out or if you're a member, it's probably already there for you. Uh, but yeah, three decent lures, but there isn't a bad lure, uh, in my opinion. We have a character called the Sergeant at Arms. He's 45 points. Movement 4, Weapon Skill 4, plus Skill 2. Strength 4, Toughness 3, 2 Wounds, 4 Initiative, 2 Attack, and Leadership 7. 45 points comes with Light Armor, can buy a Halberd, additional Hand Weapon, can buy a Cavalry Spear if it's mounted, may take a Shield, may buy a War Horse, may buy up to 25 points of Magic Items, um, has a bunch of duty, uh, the duties, it has a bunch of rules, one of them being um, Peasant's Duty, Peasantry, Warband, and Levy. So Peasant Duty, if this character in any unit they have joined, oh, sorry, this character in any unit they have joined may choose to give ground whether to fall back in good order and does not have to make panic tests when a friendly unit of levies breaks and flees from combat while within six of it. In addition, unless this character is being, uh, this character is fleeing, any fleeing unit that is within the command range of, uh, any friendly unit that is within their command range and has a levy special rule may reroll failed panic. So many, many leaders, basically for your peasants. 45 points doesn't seem bad at all. In fact, I gotta find some appropriate models. Comment below if you know a good place to get a good sergeant at our model. Oh, I'm gonna join existing peasants, or should I just convert some up myself? I'll probably just do that. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have some of these in my army moving forward. Uh, Bretonian war horses are, as we expect from previous editions, um, but again, if you just do first time, it's a... Um, it gives you movement eight and one additional strength three attack. But they have barding, counter charge, finest war horse, first charge, and swift stride. So counter charge, fantastic rule. Cav, chariots, monsters charging in the front, um, outside, you know, their their movement range. They can uh, counter charge and charge in at the same time. Uh, finest war horses, that's the rule where they reroll all the ones to flee, charge, and pursue. First charge, first charge they do in the game, um, disrupts the enemy, and Swift Stride. Now, they also have regular War Horses. They're just the same stats, but they don't have Barding. All they have is Fast Cav and Swift Stride. Uh, that's for the Mounted Yeoman, we'll get to them later. But uh, the War Horses are on a 25 by 50 mil base, whereas Bretonian War Horses are on 30 by 60. A little bit bigger. Uh, a you oh, sorry, I, the, the Damsels, I think there's the Damsel, can purchase a Unicorn. Oh, no, sorry. A Prophetess or a Damsel can buy a Unicorn for 35 points. The Unicorn is on a 40 by 60 base. It's a little bit wider, same as the Pegasus base, but has movement 10 um, and two strength four attacks. And it adds plus one wound to your Damsel or Prophetess. Uh, it counts as Monstrous Cavalry. The Unicorn itself has Armor Bane 2 because it's you know, got that giant horn. Armored Hide 1, which will add a six of armor save to your Damsel. And Beguiling Aura, Counter Charge or Magical Attacks, Stomps 1 and Swift Stride. So Beguiling Aura, enemy models, must take leadership, enemy models must make a leadership test before making any rolls to hit against this model during the combat phase. If it's failed, only rolls of natural 6 will hit. That's not a bad rule. 35 points for this, for this um, model. If it was on a 30 by 60 mil base, I'd buy it for everyone my my prophetesses. Prophetesses. <laughs> My wizard ladies, uh, but they, it can join the lance, no problem. Just, you know, offsets a little bit. I just have some movement trays that makes it uh, frustrating for me, but it's fine. Uh, so we have Knights of the Realm on Foot, a, one of the brand new units. Um, Knights of the Realm stats are movement four, weapon skill four, strength toughness three, one wound, initiative three, one attack, leadership eight for 11 points a model. They come with hand weapons, heavy armor, and shield. The whole unit for two points can take great weapons, or for one point can swap their shield for great weapons uh, by command, and they can have a magic banner worth of 25 points, and the, the, the first knight, the sergeant of the unit, the leader of the unit, can purchase 25 points worth of magic items. They come with Blessing of the Lady, Close Order, that's their formation obviously, Furious Charge, and the Knight's Vow. So the, uh, when they charge, extra attacks. I think I want two units, because I don't... Comment below how you want to use your, your Knights of the Realm on foot. Do you want hand weapon and shield, or do you want great weapons? I think the only thing I'm going to have to do is buy two units of them and have one of each, and find out which one I want to like using more. We do have Squires yet again. We haven't had Squires in a while. I think it was... 
fifth edition last time we had squires yeah in bretonia so um a squire has your average human stat so movement four weapon skill blue skill strength toughness of three one wound initiative three one attack leadership seven and there's seven points of model they come with long bows and hand weapons everything up to the hand weapon um they can have command they can purchase the fire and flee special rule for one point per model and they can have uh they can have the scout special rule for one point per model they have already innately move through cover open order peasantry skirmish and vanguard so get a little bit moved before the game starts so they have open order and uh, vanguard so they can be um in formation and move even better than average with open order and they also have skirmishers and just be like nice wide skirmishers so seven points of model i definitely see myself getting these models for sure if games workshop doesn't re-release these models um there's a place i have to i have to, I have to find it again but I, there's a place you can buy a nice um 3d sculpt that perfectly fits the aesthetic of the era of models that this, art, this army has available to it so yeah i'm gonna go find those stls if games workshop doesn't re-release those models um men at arms are your basic peasant infantrymen so they're moving for weapon skill with skill two strength toughness three one wound initiative three one attack leadership five but they're only four points a model now the yeoman the sergeant uh same stats but additional attack like a normal unit leader has but he also has plus one leadership you're going to see that a lot for a few armies a lot of armies have sergeants unit leaders having plus one leadership which kind of like because you can still kill them out and lower their leadership but they can also buy what's called a grail monk for an additional seven points it counts as a second unit champion the grail monk uh just follows unit for a champion but the grail monk can purchase the blessed i can't even say this word a blessed little uh, icon it gives the unit stubborn but it costs 25 points so you have to buy the grail monk for seven points and then buy the blessed trip tripic tri words that steve doesn't know and can't spell or pronounce for 25 points so it's 31 points to basically give a unit stubborn that's like half the cost of the unit i don't know if you ever want to buy that but they come with pole arms and pole arms are awesome they come with light armor shield and pole arms the unit um a pole arm can be basically used as effectively a spear or effectively a um a halberd so either two hands plus one strength ap1 or one hand and your shield but you fight an extra rank obviously you can't charge and fight an extra rank it's only when you get charged so yeah choose a weapon you're going to use i think I, i'll end up using the spear more often than not but that halberd could be useful when you want to make a charge i uh, know we have oh sorry there's more rules they have to go over with them where's their special rules they have close order they have the horde special rule now horde just means you can have up to three rank bonus instead of two so they have the horde they have levies uh, peasantry shield wall and warband um levies is for the panic stuff now a warband as a rule you're going to see a lot, a lot a lot of things old guys will understand is basically old skaven strength and numbers a lot of orcs have this a lot of you a lot of um a lot of less professional soldier type things during this game will have a rule called warband warband allows you to add your rank bonus to your leadership that's really good because you have to roll higher in your leadership to break if you can get just a couple more points of leadership out you can really hold and grind in combat these things are dirt cheap and you can grind out combat with them for quite a while uh with their leadership six on their yeoman their sergeant maybe you have you know two ranks uh their leadership eight by just by themselves oh i believe peasantry uh, which is this way also means if he was with the special rules when six are friendly mall that has a knight's vow questing vow grail vow and that that model's not fleeing they can use that mall's leadership instead of their own oh right and things with the peasantry rule their banners don't give up special uh, extra points for um trophies of war they get bonus victory points for uh capturing enemy standards not against the peasants but they also use the general sorry other knights leadership within six of them so yeah men at arms i think are pretty solid now peasant bowmen are five points a model one point more than the uh men at arms uh they have bliss skill three 
and leadership seven on the basic peasant bowman, uh, better than even the yeoman of the men at arms. So one point more per model. You only have uh, hand weapon and longbows, better ballistic skill, and better leadership. You can buy late armor for one point per model. Um, you can buy defensive stakes for ten points for the entire unit. Uh, you've seen them in pictures, little stakes that stand in front of the peasants. Uh, if the peasants ever move, the stakes go away. They cannot move at all. So that you stand behind them, and they give you a defensive row of um, walls. So if anything charges you, it's dangerous terrain for like chariots and calves. But it's um, basically a wall, um, a low linear obstacle, I think is the rule. Uh, So charging them, uh, you get you become disrupted by charging the defensive stakes. So you lose your rank bonuses charging in against the bow, the peasants with those stakes. Either way, uh, they also have burning braziers for twenty points. It gives uh, flaming attacks to the unit. I'm, I hopefully I'm missing flaming attacks. Is I uh, if so far feels useless because in previous editions, flaming attacks would negate regeneration. Now it does not. The only things flaming, the only rule flaming attacks gives you is um, swarms and war beasts have fear. Like you cause fear to swarms and war beasts. That's all it does. Now, if the opponent has flammable and regeneration, they can't use regeneration against flaming attacks. So, trolls, for example, uh, uh, orc and goblin trolls, they are flammable and have regeneration. So flaming attacks prevent trolls from regenerating, but all of undead have regeneration six plus, but they don't have flammable, so they get their regeneration. So flaming attacks for 20 points, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's awesome, I don't know. Close order levies and peasantry. Um, I can see purchasing quite a bit of peasants, only five points a model. Oh, and I believe uh, if you don't buy defensive stakes and you don't buy braziers, you can replace closed order with skirmishers for free. Next we got the Battle Pilgrims and the Grail Reliquary. No, they renamed it Reliquary. I feel like they renamed it. Could have swore it used to be the Grail Reliquary. Now it's Reliquary. Anyway, so um, these are Battle Pilgrims, are Movement 4, Weapon Skill Blitz Skill 2, Strength Toughness 3, 1 Wound, Initiative 3, 1 Attack, Leadership 8. So solid leadership. And uh, eight points per model. They can buy the reliquary. That's the dead Grail Knight on his dead horse. It's on a bigger base, and a bunch of guys carry him. It goes in the center of the unit. That costs 65 points. Everybody has late armor and shields. The Battle Pilgrims have closed order. So basically, plus one combat resistance in closed order. Hatred, all enemies, levies, peasantries, and stubborn special rule. The Grail Reliquary has the relic, relic, I can't pronounce these things. Has the blessing of the lady, closed order, hatred all enemies, um, retinue of saints, and stubborn. So let's read all those. Your army may include up to, so retinue of saints is your army may include up to one grail reliquary for every character or unit with the grail thou uh, it includes. So you have to have something else with the grail in your army to bring this. Now what the grail reliquary does is place in the center of the front rank of the unit. It occupies the space, uh, well, six models, first the important rules. Um, the, the Grail Reliquary counts as both a standard bearer and musician for the, its unit, while the Reliquary itself is within 12 of a friendly model with the Grail Vow and is not fleeing. Uh, the unit gains the immune psychology and unbreakable special rules. Pretty solid. But these are eight points a model. They're more expensive than the undead. <laughs> but there's no unstable, right? All right, we have Knights Errant. There are 19 points a model. Basic human stats. Weapon skill three, strength toughness three, one wound, three initiative, one attack, leadership seven. You can buy command, obviously. They have closed order, finest war horses, first charge, lance formation, swift stride, the knight's vow, and the impetuous special rule. That means if you don't want to uh, declare a charge, roll a die, 50 50, you have to declare a charge. But they're only 19 points a model with a three up armor save. I'll use them because they're fun. These are the these are the young young bloods of the army. Mounted knights of the realm have slightly better than average human stats. They are a human stat, but their weapon skill four and leadership eight. Twenty four points a model. Um, 
Counter charge, close order, finest war horses, first charge, lance formation, swift spread, night bell. Uh, just bring tons of these. They're going to do absolutely fine. Uh, I feel after playing like one battle report and a couple of like test games, uh, only three of armor save, not a problem. These things, these things, uh, they, they get the work done. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I only have 12 painted uh, Knights of the Realm right now, but I plan on adding a lot more to my Bretonians. Questing Knights, I only have five. I gotta find more of these things. These things are weapon skill five, strength four, uh, toughness three, one wound, initiative four, one attack leadership eight, with great weapons. <clears throat> um, oh, this is another unit I just love. Less armor, because they can't use their shield in combat, only a four up armor save. But... Oh, Barter, barter Wars, I haven't said that for all these knights. Yeah, 26 points, so a couple more points per model, but get that nice strength four all the time. And great weapons aren't terrible, especially if you're on a horse, because they, they, go, they make you initiative one before modifier. So after you charge, you're initiative four. So you're swinging before most other things. Elves and Chaos and certain things are going to swing at the same initiative you are faster, but I like these questing knights. Grail knights are real good, but they're also real expensive. 38 points a model. Weapon skill 6, strength and toughness 4, initiative 5, 2 attacks per model, which is great because the edges of the, the, the lance formation, all the models on the edges, count as being base contact, so they get their full complement of attacks. A lot of attacks here. Uh, heavy armor shields um, and barding. So 3 of armor save, only 1 wound, toughness 4, 2 attacks per model. Now they have the Blessing of the Lady, close order, counter charge, finest war horses, all the basic stuff. Um, but you also have the Living Saint special rule, which means every model unit can issue an extra type of challenges the same manner as the character. Now, the Grail Guardian, the unit leader here, the sergeant, has plus one attack. He has actually three attacks. But uh, yeah, this is a solid unit. Again, I only have five, but I think I saw in the article today that these will be relatively soon on Warcom. Um, so they should be available to purchase. I hope to add more to my army, but 38 points a model. How many do I really need, right? Because like, uh, like they're going to be rare in your army. Uh, so 25% of your army can be spent on Grail Knights or Bill Trebuchets. Pegasus Knights, 55 points a model, weapon skill 4, strength and toughness 4, 2 wounds apiece, initiative 3, 1 attack, leadership, uh, leadership 8, monstrous cav, uh, they can buy all the command. They have dispersed formation, basically they have skirmish, but it's like a 2 inch skirmish formation. They can buy a magic standard worth up to 50 points. I think I forgot to mention that the Bretonian Grail, the Grail Knights can buy a standard up to 50 points. The... Oh no, the Grail Knights and the uh, Questing Knights can buy a standard worth up to 100 points. I actually really like that. Um, the, the Sergeants of those units can buy a Knightly Virtue of any point cost. Interesting. Wow, the Grail Knight, okay, so you can buy a magic item for 25 points for the, the Questing Knight. The Grail Knight, you can buy up to 50 points of magic items. He's basically a paladin with one wound and about half the cost, but half the wounds, but the same output. Yeah, the Grail Knight, eh, Sergeant's pretty, pretty good. So back to Pegasus Knights, um, the Fly 10, the Ethereus Charge. So just not the mount, but just the riders on top. Plus one attack on the turn they charge. Uh, 55 points to model, but I think worth it all day long. How powerful Fly will be this edition. Now the characters can join them as well. Pegasus Knights. I have... Um, I have 17. None painted at the moment. <laughs> I don't know how many I should paint. Comment below how many things I should paint. I don't, I don't think I want to paint more than six. Maybe 12. Mounted Yeoman. <gasps> <coughs> Excuse me, I've been doing this all day, sorry. Mounted Yeoman, okay. <clears throat> 13 points a model. Uh, weapon skill, blitz skill, strength, toughness, initiative 3, 1 wound, 1 attack, leadership 6. Uh, you can buy a sergeant, like a warden, a leader of the unit. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. For a plus 5 points. They come with cavalry spears and short bows. Oh, short bows. I just caught the fact that I did a better port. Didn't think, didn't think they were short bows. Short, I thought they were regular war bows. Short bows are better for Cav because they have um, 
quick to fire is what it used to be called let's look this up together sharp bows have quick shot and volley fire and then i believe quick shot I can do the alphabet, everybody. Man reads both. This is what you're here for, right? Yeah, dang. Yeah, so they have quick shots, so uh, no penalty for, um, for moving and shooting. Uh, this is a fantastic unit. I have two of them. Uh, I don't think I need more than two, but I think every, every Bretonian player needs to get some mounted yeoman because they have the fast cav, Fire and Flee, Levies, Open Order, Peasantry, Reserve, Move, Skirmishers, and Swift Stride. So, they can move their 8 inches, fire their bows without penalty, without movement penalty, uh, and in their shooting phase, and move again. So, if they need to march somewhere, they have to do a march test. Um, and they don't have a real issue. They can, they're going to fail it more often than not. But if you need to move double, let's go move your, move your 8, shoot your bow, and move your 8 again. It's as good as marching. But now you get to shoot without a shooting penalty because the reserve move special rule. This squad with reserve skirmish and reserve move, like these are. If I'm ever gonna play Bretonia with the like uh, compet, like I want to play competitively, I'm trying to win. I'm gonna have mounted yeoman on the list no matter what. Field a trebuchet, uh, top of the seven three wounds is war machine. Um, it is a it is a stone thrower. Um, range 12 to 72. Uh, under the hole, one model gets hit at strength 10 AP4. Otherwise, everybody else who's hit is strength 5 AP1. But the model under the hole takes D3 plus 1 wounds, whereas a typical catapult is only D3. So pretty good. But it can never move. 100 points. All right, Knightly Virtues. Should we go over all these? I feel like... The answer is going to be yes. So these are the extra bonuses you can buy for a lot of your unit sergeants, but your, your Duke, Paladins, and uh, Barons. So for 70 points, you can purchase the Virtue of Knightly Temper. And keep in mind, these are not included in your magic item allotment. So you can buy a Virtue plus whatever magic items that your allotment allows you. So for 70 points, Virtue of the Knightly Temper, during a turn which you just model charged, you get D3 additional attacks and hatred all enemies. That's really good. That's really good. Ooh, that's really good. We roll in the hit. And plus, D it's 70 points, though. It's not cheap. 60 points gives you the virtue of heroism. Unless using a magic weapon, a model with this uh, virtue gains killing blow and monster slayer. I don't know if I want to spend 60 points on that. So, a great weapon or a lance is fine. It's all you need. 60 points for sixes to hit, pretty much kill everything. Monster Slayer, six of the wound, just kills it. Ah, maybe it's pretty worth it. It is 60 points, though. But it's not coming to your magic item a lot, man. I, mean, I don't hate it. You know what? If it was cheaper, it might be an auto-include. So it's probably pretty good then. Virtue of Stoicism for 55 points. Um, model with this uh, Virtue and its unit can reroll the 2d6 when making a break test. 50 points for the Virtue of the Penitent. Only a Duke, Baron, or Paladin can use it. No champions. A uh, character with this Virtue gains the Unbreakable Special Rule. However, you can never join a friendly unit. That could be good on a... Um, a Hippogriff character. <coughs> However, so could the next one. Virtue of the Ideal for 45 points. Uh, Duke... Paladin or uh, Baron only. A character with this virtue adds plus one modifier to its weapon skill, its initiatives, attacks, and leadership characteristics. However, the character cannot be your army's general or join a friendly unit. This is Landun. Landun? This is Lancelot. And then there's a virtue of the Impetuous Knight for 40 points. A model with this virtue gains the Impetuous Special, special Rule. I don't want to pay points for that. In addition, this model and its unit increases its maximum charge by three. Finally, when this model and its unit makes a charge roll, you may add an additional D3 modifier. So yeah, I, it's just, it's, I don't like paying 40 points for my pawn to control me. 
I don't think you'll ever, ever outside of narrative, ever see me take that one. <clears throat> 35 points for the virtue of audacity. Audacity. A model with this virtue may re-roll any failed rolls to hit uh, made against a model with a higher weapon skill than it. Too situational. But, na but narratively, <clears throat> could be pretty good. Uh, virtue of pure purity. You see, I'll, I think I'll use often. 30 points. Um, model with this benefits in the lady's blessing, always, and has a 5 of war save, even if the model did not pray at the start of the turn. So having a, a 5 of war save against every strength of attack is pretty good for like a Pegasus character who wants to run by himself, uh, a Hippogriff character. See, it's interesting, a model with this virtue always benefits in the blessing of the Lady's Fish rule, and is a 5 of war save. But what happens if you flee? So, losing the blessing. Unlike other special rules, the blessing of the lady can be lost during a game. Any model or unit that flees, or any character that refuses their challenge, will immediately lose a special rule. A model with this virtue always benefits in the blessing of the lady. I wonder what the intent there is. I think rules is written. This guy can refuse a challenge and flee and keep his blessing. Uh, virtue of duty for 25 points. Uh, Duke, Baron, or Paladin only, unless the general of your army has been removed from play as a casualty. When calculating combat result, this character may claim a bonus of plus one uh, point. We've seen that in the last book as well. However, there's a new line here. This character cannot be your army general or join a friendly unit. I really strongly believe that or join a friendly unit was a was a typo, not meant to be there. So you have, for 25 points, you get plus one combat result, as long as your general's alive, but you can't ever join a unit. I don't... Okay. Uh, virtue of the Joes for 20 points. A model with this virtue may reroll any failed rolls to wound when, making, when using a lance. I can see myself putting that on a... Um, uh, Grail Knight champion. Virtue of confidence. A model with this virtue may always issue and accept challenges. If possible. Must always issue and accept challenges if possible. During a challenge, this model may reroll fail to hit. It's 15 points. I might do it. Try to put together the ultimate Bretonian duelist. Comment below if you figured that out yet. <clears throat> a virtue of noble disdain for 10 points. A model with this virtue may reroll fail to hit rolls made during the first round of combat when engaged with enemies equipped with missile weapons. It's only 10 points, but it's too situational. Five points for the virtue of discipline. A uh, model with this virtue and, any, uh, and its unit can march whilst with an aid of the enemy unit without having first make a leadership test. I don't think I ever need that. If I have five points left over, I'll buy it. Virtue of empathy for Duke, Baron, or Paladins only. You may join a peasant unit. Oh, and the virtues, only once per army. You can't have multiple units with the virtue of empathy. They're uniquely magic items. Um, virtues, I can, I will definitely use them, but they're not necessary. I think they're in a good spot. I think they're in a good spot. Uh, the, you can make some very powerful characters, but the point cost on these, these characters are going to rack up fast. Because like the virtue of nightly temper, that's going to get worked on, on on a few different characters. Virtue of the ideal, pretty good as well. Virtue of purity, I'm going to see. Yeah, uh, there's a number of these I'd, I'd use probably regularly. So magic items for Bretonia. We have the Sword of the Quest for 70 points, 7-0 points. It can be used single-handedly um, at strength plus 1, AP 1, but gives you uh, magical attacks and strikes first. Now, I want to point out, if you use it single-handedly, you're basically paying 50 points for strikes first. That means you strike an extra 10. Um, because you can buy a Sword of Might for plus one strength, plus one AP, and magical attack for 20 points. But you can also hit, hold it two-handed, which is not bad. It's strength plus two, AP two, much like a great weapon. Um, and it does strike last. This thing has magical attacks and multiple wounds too. Requires two hands. So it is effectively a great weapon. And all regards, except for it has magical attacks 
Great weapons have Armor Bane as well, but this doesn't. So Magical Attacks for Armor Bane, and multiple wounds too. Now, the good thing about this is, each round of combat you can switch between. I just see this weapon as too expensive. This thing, I don't see using... I can't... There are better generic weapons for two damage. I just can't see it. This thing is about 20 points over cost, I think. It's probably worth about 50 points. I don't like this one at all. This one's, this one's, a, this one's a feel bad here. The option... <sighs> the fact that you can... Typically, you have multiple weapons. You can't switch. Once you're in combat, you pick the first run of combat and that you're locked into that. This one allows you to specifically switch. That I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna actually try it. My gut says no, but I'm willing to accept that I could be very wrong on this one. Next, we got the Sword of Heroes for sixty points. It is strength user, magical attacks, and monster slayer. Um, when making a to wound roll, wait. I hate the way they word things. I'll read it. When making a to wound roll for a hit caused with the Sword of Heroes, a roll of 5 plus is always a success, regardless of target's toughness. It's strength user, and it's 60 points. For, like... It, it doesn't trigger Monster Slayer on a 5 plus. You still need a 6 for that. Like, why would I not just buy the Virtue of Heroism for 60 points? You gain... Killing Blow and Monster Slayer. You have both of them. And you can still... Oh, no, you, you can't buy a magic weapon. Virtue of Heroism says you can't buy a magic weapon. But you can still spend points on other things. I don't know if I want to spend 60 points by magic item allotment on the uh, Sword of Heroes. I'm not loving Bretonian weapons so far. The rule book has nice generic ones. Heartwood lands for 50 points. Um, you can only use one charge. So after you charge, you must use your hand weapon. So it is strength plus three, AP three, and magical attacks for 50 points. A typical lance is strength plus two, AP two. And if you're a grail, you have magical attacks. Is it grail gives you magical attacks? For sure. Uh, grail vow is this way. Yeah, magical attacks. So... <laughs> it's effectively 50 points for a lance that gives you plus one strength and plus one AP. Watch that end up being awesome. I don't know. I'm not loving it. The Morning Star of Francois, Francois a Morning Star for 40 points. Uh, strength plus one, minus one AP, and magical attacks. Any magic weapon carried by an enemy model that Suffers one or more unsaved wounds from the Morning Star, is destroyed, and he cannot be used for the remainder of the game. I will. I this one I love. This one I love to death. Strength plus one AP one, solid, especially on the new Strength five Duke. A lot of attacks, destroying your opponent's magic weapons. Spend the rest of your uh, stuff defensively. Uh, make a real good duelist here, I think. But maybe people aren't gonna buy magic weapons that often. We'll see. We'll see. If we see a lot of magic weapons in the field. You're going to see the Morningstar a lot. If we don't see that many magic weapons in the field, because these days, a lance, a great weapon, these are all more than fine. Um, for magic armor, we have the Gilded Curus. It's 60 points. It gives you a generation 5 plus. Um, it, it's, heavy, it's a suit of heavy armor. Um, I think it's awesome because with the, the Lady's Vow, or the Blessing of the Lady, I should say, you have a model with an armor save, a ward save, and then a regeneration save. Three, three saves. Um, I was trying to find a way of doing that with all the armies. Um, at first glance, I couldn't find that easily. Having three good saves on a model, because a five aboard, uh, five regeneration, these are actually really good in this edition. Uh, seeing four aboards and, and regenerations are rare. So uh, you can easily get a two up, five up, five up, uh, reasonably, uh, in Bretonia, which is real good. The Grommel Great Helm. No longer can you take the Grommel Great Helm and the Sword of Might on your Paladin anymore. Because the Grommel Great Helm is now 40 points. Uh, it increases your armor by 1. Maximum of 2+, plus, no more 1 of armor saves. Maximum of 2 of armor. And you can reroll natural 1s and make an armor saves. So 40 points. It's not cheap. But in the 
context of modern magic items. It's not that bad, actually. In Talismans, we have the Mantle of Damzolina. The bearer is immune to the poison attack special rule. Uh, if the bearer is wounded by an attack with, this, with a rule, it must roll to wound as normal. Just immune to poison for 25 points. Uh, Syrians, Locket, 25 points. A model whose troop type is infantry or cav only, so no monsters. The bearer is immune to multiple wounds X. So no, no multiple wounds against this model. Uh, they just take a single wound. That's actually, it'd be really good in a monster, obviously. But it's only 25 points. It's pretty cheap, so it's pretty good. Going over to Magic Standards, we have the Valor Standard for 60 points. A unit carrying the Valor Standard uh, rolls 3d6 when making a break test and discards the highest result. Not bad. 60 points, though. Not bad. We still have the Conqueror's Tapestry here. It's only 40 points. An enemy standard captured by a unit carrying the Conqueror's Tapestry is worth 100 victory points as a trophy of war. If you have a big block of knights, I want to put this tapestry on them. We have the Errantry Banner, which is um, confusing to me. It's 30 po the Errantry Banner is 30 points. Knights Errant can't take it because they can only take a banner worth 25 points. The Errantry Banner is 30 points. All models in the unit carrying the Errantry Banner have a plus one modifier to their strength characteristics the turn they charge. How all, however, they also gain Impetuous. Remember, 50-50, you have to charge if you don't want to. I don't want to pay points for that. Banner of Shalones, 20 points. Enemy units cannot declare a stand and shoot reaction against a unit carrying the Banner of Shalone. That's good. I want to, I want to try to remember to put that in all my lists that are going to go... Like, if I have a lone character on a, on a pal, uh, sorry, Pegasus, hunting um, units of archers and skirmishers and stuff like that. Oh, wait, he can't have a Banner. But he was the BSB, he could. But yeah, um... Just, well, the standing and shooting adds to um, combat res these days. So this banner is actually damn good. If you want to just charge, like, Dwarf Thunders or whatever. Enchanted Horn, Enchanted Items, we have the Horn of uh, Friedman. Oh, let me show this off in the war call. I'm not going to go over this again. And, uh, in case you didn't read the article. Uh, the Falcon Horn of Friedman, uh, during the command subphase of their turn, if they are not engaged in combat, the character may attempt to use the Falcon Horn by making a leadership test. If the test is passed until the start of your next turn, um, enemy units cannot use the Fly X special rule. Situational, but damn good. Antlers of the Great Hunt for 25 points. The, the wearer of the Antlers of the Great Hunt is mounted. Oh, if the wearer of the Antlers of the Great Hunt is mounted on a bartered warhorse or warhorse, uh, they and the unit they join get the move through cover special rule. Do I care? Yes. Yeah. Do I care to purchase that? And quickly run out of points. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see in the future how often that gets. Depending on certain spells that get used in the game that put difficult terrain on the table. All right, for five points, get the Gauntlet of the Duel. So uh, this one is actually, I have to double check the asterisks. This is actually extremely common. So you have multiples of these. Challenges issued by the bearer of the Gauntlet of the Duel cannot be refused. So five points, you have more than one in your army. Um, arcane items, you have the Silver Mirror for 35 points. <coughs> Single use, the bearer of the Silver Mirror may use it when attempting a wizardly dispel. If they do, roll an extra d6 when making the dispel roll and discard the lowest. If, uh, if a double one is rolled on any of the two days rolled, the bear's outclassed in the art and the attempt, dispel attempt fails. If the, the attempt was successful, this, uh, the spell is dispelled and the casting with it, wizard suffers a strength four hit with AP of two. It's only one use though. But that was on his last wound. I guess if it wasn't one use, it'd be too powerful. Uh, the Sacrament of the Lady. Oh, another common item. So you have multiples of these. 30 points. Single use. The bearer of the Sacrament of the Lady may use it before making a casting roll. If they do, apply the additional plus two modifier to the casting roll. This is not a gate effect of level one. The Prayer Icon of Quinellis. 25 points. The bearer of the Prayer Icon. Increases their dispel range by three. 
Additionally, when attempting to dispel a hex spell, the bearer of the prayer icon gains a plus one modifier to the roll. Um, I suspect, it's too early to say for me, because I haven't had enough games in, I suspect the range might be an important thing. I can see myself purchasing this, I think. I don't want to be hexed. And uh, an additional three inches, your opponent can't just, like, maybe not be able to get out of range to prevent you from spelling their spells. Okay. I think the last thing to cover, yep, is the lore of the lady. So there are three spells that are in the lore of the lady. These are signature spells, whatever lore you choose on your um, damsels and prophetess. I think it was, Ele if I remember correctly, illusion, battle magic, and elementalism. Uh, they can swap for the signature spell in that or one of these. So we have the lady's gift. It's an enchantment of seven or ten. It's a 12 inch uh, range and it remains in play. If the spell is cast with a casting value of seven or more, the target friendly unit gains a regeneration six plus special rule. If the cast with the casting result of 10 or more, super easy to do. Um, the target gains the regeneration of five plus special rule. The spell may be targeted on a unit engaged in combat. Your knights already have ward saves. You have your armor save, a ward save, and a regen save with this spell. I love this spell. Um, we have an enchantment for casting value 9, range of self, remains in play. While this spell is in play, the caster, their mount, and any unit they have joined gain plus one modifier to their strength and improve armor penetration by one. Love it. Love it. Uh, then they have Burning Gaze. Uh, it's a magic missile with a casting value of 10 plus. Its range is 5d6. You roll 5d6, total that up, that's your range. Draw a straight line, um, 5d6 in length. From the caster's base edge, any enemy model whose base falls under the line suffers a single strength four hit with no armor space permitted. Ward and regeneration are allowed. So you can cast this uh, while deep inside the center of a lance uh, because the rule of shield the lady or something like that allows you to cast with line sight and everything as normal. And you, you do your line, it comes out of you. Uh, but only enemy models take the strength for it, so you can pass right through your own models with this. Um, I'm not wowed by this spell. Um, can the, the wizard, can the prophetess take a flying mount? Yeah, I think you want a pegasus. Okay, so if I want to try a pegasus on, sorry, a prophetess on a pegasus, that spell could be fun. Zip through a whole line of bodies, strength four and armor says That could rip, rip off entire ranks of units. Okay, yeah, I like that one. So, Bretonia. Thoughts on them? Don't have a lot of games in my belt. My word doesn't mean a whole lot right now. Um, mobility, armor, regenerations, uh, ward says, decent spells, shooting, war machines, uh, their own formations, crazy good fighters, lots of... Ah, die. It's the... This is going to be a very fun army to play. I, I'm sure you've seen by now. I have a very large Bretonian army painted up and ready to go. Um, you see a lot of bad reports on this channel with Bretonia. Uh, what do you think? What, what do you like? What don't you like? Uh, how you want? How are you going to equip your uh, um, Knights of the Realm on foot? Did you find any combos for your Duke that you need to share with me? Comment below. Otherwise, stay tuned for a bunch more of these videos. Bretonia, looks good. Excited. Well, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. There are plenty more just like it ready for you to watch right now. All the names you see flying by right now are the Rock Jocks of Peak supporters, our channel members that do help support the channel a little bit more than the average member. Think about joining the channel. It does help us keep making these videos. Please subscribe, hit that bell, all that good YouTube stuff. Comment in the comments below for algorithm. See you in the next one. And happy Wargaming.